were you, did you guys keep in touch? Was it something where you're hanging together or you you know, you all had girlfriends and now wives and, and thinking about other things? What's, what's your daily days right. like? You sleeping until one or two in the oh. afternoon? Or? Not anymore. <laughs> for a little while, <laughs> no, no. That, yeah, month at a time. Mm. Yeah, a lot of sleep. <laughs> we did call each other pretty quickly after the tour stopped. Um, but then almost, it almost felt like we kind of didn't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah. But we knew we were supposed to take time off. Yeah. But we didn't. Yeah. I had these moments where I'd feel like, oh, I want to make an album right now. And it was like three months after we stopped touring. Like stuff like that would happen. You'd get these. But you just didn't know how to kind of yeah. face it again. It was really strange. It felt like you were like prescribed time off or something. Yeah. Like, like you have to take this, you know, so and so many months off before you can start again. Or... Like the rogue detective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. After the, the time off is occurring, at what point do you realize, okay, now it's time to get back on the road, it's time to get back in the recording studio? Is, is, there, is there an epiphany that any of you have, says it's time, or do you simply evolve into it? Well, I think with this record, and I think it's a lot of why the first attempt got scrapped, it, all it was was this feeling of you must do an album because you have to, because like if you don't, what's going to happen to the band, and you know what's going what's gonna to happen to you guys? And... You well, you know. took four years off. I mean, well, that's, right? that's not true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. Well, well people really. Oh, yeah. They're out of the public eye. From record I mean. to record, yeah. I mean, it was. I, I, I would say, public eye wise, though, even even two two and a half years in, it would get to the point where we'd be in like um, like a Barnes and Noble and still see a photo on a magazine. Yeah. To the point yeah. where I, we were like, even I was like, oh my god, oh, still out there. Yeah, like this is crazy, you know. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of just like a completely casual music listener, yeah, for a four-year kind of kind of gap. But it definitely felt more like I have to do it. Like it almost felt like, I, well, it must be time. Yeah. Because it's been enough time. We've had enough time off. But I think yeah. doing the, the Watchmen soundtrack too, like right. it, that was like yeah. the opportunity to get us into the studio to do something that we have wanted to do ever since we were kids, like to you know be a part of that movie. And then like that felt really good. To just be in a studio and, and just play really loud, yeah. and uh, I think if we had got, like if we had gotten into the studio to actually write a record that week, or we had stayed in that studio, we could have came out with a record. Yeah. You know, I don't know how good it would have been, mm -hmm. yeah. but like we could have came out with a record. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think you know we we had to take the time to to kind of get the studios lined up, and it, it was like yeah, all right, yeah, it's time. Like we feel like playing together again, but I don't think we we were inspired to write a record. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, we just thought, you know, we want to get together again. Mm -hmm. and so how does the Dylan cover come? Where, where does the idea come to do Desolation Row? That was actually from... Yeah, um, the director, yeah. 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 He had wanted to bookend the film with, yeah. with Dylan songs, but he says, I want to do... Because the whole soundtrack is all these classic songs. Yeah. He says, well, at the end, I want to, you know, do this thing at the end, though, that, that has a modern band doing a, a take uh, on one of these songs. So Did you guys know this song? Did you... Yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you when you brought it up, we were like, "That's a long song." Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> that's right. That There's a lot of lyrics song. in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he was cool. He was like, "No, you can, you know, do what you want to do with it." And mm -hmm. so we took a little bit of uh, you know artistic freedom with it. But it, it, you know, it's still fun to play live. It's one of those songs that just it rips. Is it in the live show? Pretty it much? it yeah. has been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've been playing it. Mm -hmm. Let's. Reverse a little bit and go back in time. Let's go back because, again, this is for the archives. I want to talk about the roots and talk about growing up in New Jersey and what, what, what that was like. And eventually we'll get to 2001. But what's it like in, in, your, in, in your household, each of, of you? What are your earliest musical roots? And how do you basically get into music to say, ooh, this is something I want to do? Mm. Um, go right down the line. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it was my, my older brother, Louis. Um, he played guitar. Um, we all, sh all of us shared, uh, me, I have two older brothers, we all shared a bedroom, um, probably about the size of these two carpets put together. Um, you know, so we were all very close to each other, and my oldest brother, you know, he was out of high school and, you know, working at the local shop, right, and got um, enough money together to buy, like, a, a small amp and, and buy his first guitar, and so he would, you know, spend all hours playing guitar. And I, I shared a room with him, and, you know, I just looked up to him so much. Um, you know, and then as I got older, uh, around like junior high, I guess like around 15 or 16, I, you know, some friends that I met, um, you know, were interested in like, uh, you know, like Metallica, Pantera, Anthrax, Overkill, you know, kind of like metal bands. And, um, you know, I talked to my brother and he was like, he had a whole stack of guitar magazines and handed me them and handed me his guitar and, you know, 
basically showed me how to play in that sense. Mm -hmm. He just gave me the he gave me the keys, you know. And um, yeah, he's been, he's always been like a great influence. He's such got, got such a good heart. Um, I, he's he's all, he's like my music hero. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, me and Gerard, uh, we shared a bedroom growing up, so we kind of uh, we kind of had the same same musical uh, interests. You know, we were all you know we were in the same microcosm. Uh, we really liked. Um, like Queen and Michael Jackson and and uh, Prince and Bruce Springsteen and then you know as we got older, we went into the uh, like the Misfits and, and Metallica and Danzig and, and the Smiths you know and it kind of evolved from yeah. there. Um, I didn't share a bedroom with anybody, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my dad and my grandfather were both drummers, huh. so uh, they would play all the time. They played you know every weekend and. Every time we would all get together or whatever, like you, they would talk about gigs that they were playing or so they were that working they, drummers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. working musicians like nice. all the time, and I'll go see them play every weekend. So um, that was a dream of mine to, to play shows and to you know have a date book that they would always talk about. Like oh I can't make it this day because I got this gig yeah. and like that was so cool to me. So I don't know if I really wanted to play music. I just wanted a date book. I think. <laughs> but but uh, uh, my dad really wanted me to play uh, an instrument. Um, they started me out on drums. Uh, I wanted to kind of be able to write songs, so I think I leaned towards other things. Um, I, I, at some point, I got a saxophone. I don't know what happened there. I didn't really like that. And then he got me a guitar, so I really like guitars. And um, I started my first band when I was 11, and ever since, wow. just wanted to be in band. Yeah, yeah. I also right. like Michael Jackson. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. Well, I, I remember really early memories of being in um, the car with my dad. Um, and he'd have like these eight tracks and like one of them was Queen and I remember being in the car me and Mikey my mom would take us to the supermarket and she, oh she only had like pop radio and they had a very small collection of records so it was mostly just pop or just old stuff that was pop anyway so first you know experiences was was with pop and then me and Mikey's grandma was musical and she had a piano and she basically you know we had no interest in really learning how to play piano but she taught me how to sing, and she was very, always pushing us to to create art, and but but music had always seemed like this thing that was unattainable, um, and it was like kind of my secret desire to be a musician, even though like it seemed like nobody does that, like nobody, you know, in the household it wasn't like this thing that that people could do, you know, um, and when I discovered punk and rock and roll, that was like it kind of made it even worse mm -hmm. that it was. So I was obviously very drawn to that, like to find something that um, could, you know, you could, like finding a band like the Misfits that was very pop but could aggressively express themselves, you mm. know, and it irritated people, and that was fun too, you know. So <laughs> I was always drawn to stuff like that. 